Good morning, everyone. Good morning. Hope that you all are doing well. I hope that you're ready for today's message. Who here is ready for an exciting message to change your life? Who here has high expectations? <laughs> <laughs> With that being said, I have realized in life sometimes we have high expectations and expectations don't always come to flourishing, if you know what I mean. So I'm only going to do my best to just share the message that I have on my heart. I'm going to try to stay true to today's message. I'm going to try and just be clear. I'm not going to try and be exciting. I'm going to do my best not to be boring um, because I do have to say that sometimes I've been in church services and these people have been very humble people who see God with all their hearts but struggle to change their tone of voice. But then, on the other hand, you always get these preachers who they like to have the fist in the, fist in the air and they're very excited and they're very passionate and it's all wonderful. But then sometimes I get lost with that too. So to be completely honest, my only hope for today is to be true, to be clear. And I'm trusting that God's going to work a wonderful message in our lives today. Um, I feel that today has the potential to be the first step towards many. And... I thank God for what he's about to do. Now with all this, without this big build-up, hopefully it's going to be good. But with that being said, and with passing on from messages to actually being at home, because we're not at church to be here. We're at church so that we can be the church out there. Now who here sat down with the Bible and sometimes, I don't know, maybe it's just me, but Sometimes I've sat down with the Bible and I've, I've read a verse and for a split second, for a split second, it felt like I understood the universe. It felt like I understood everything. It felt like God was with me at that moment like never before. And I was filled with this hope and I, and I, and I wanted to share it with someone else and suddenly it just felt like the only language I could speak was donkey or something. Because whatever I tried, I could not get that feeling across. And the more I thought about the message, I also couldn't get back to that feeling that I had. Because at that moment, it was like God was meeting with me at that moment, in that moment of time, in that verse. And never again will I find it again until by some random God incidence, it happens again. And it's wonderful. But as all of us know, reading the Bible is not always that way. Sometimes when we read our Bibles, it is quite, let's call it what it is, boring. And I, I, I sort of account this, and I keep on saying this, and please know, I say this with many messages. My message is never to say that the Bible is boring, but it is to admit that sometimes, if we do not have the right headspace, it can be boring. If we read the wrong passage with the right or with the wrong frame of mind, it can sometimes not come across the way that it should. And I've realized that there's nothing that sort of adds to this as much as we sitting down, giving God seven minutes saying, okay, God changed my life. You've got seven minutes because after that I need to do something important like wash the dishes or anything else. So that doesn't really work. But sometimes we sit down and we're really prayerful, but then we open up the wrong book because it's not relevant. I'll be sitting there ready for God and you've got the whole day. And I sit down and I open Chronicles and I start reading names. And although it sometimes feels like you're reading a dictionary, you understand the words, but it has no meaning for you, apart from the fact that the definition is right there. Sometimes it's just a bit confusing. Now the reason for this big build-up is because I'm very passionate about the book that we're about to start with. I'm passionate about the fact that we're doing the book of First Chronicles. Because we've worked through the book of Acts, seeing how this church started. And as all of, we know, all of us know, when you start something, it's easy. Sort of to continue with this message, that's a whole different story. Because you can start a diet, you can start a new morning routine and you're very passionate the night before but even that first morning it's, just, ah, it's cold, I'm going to stay in bed. <laughs> Let's face it. Um, but what I like about this book, what I like about first, first, first Corinthians is the fact that it's a book written to us. And I don't say that just because sort of in the very first chapter it says that it is, wait, in the very first chapter it says to the church of God, which is at Corinth, to those who are sanctified in Jesus Christ, or in Christ Jesus, called to be saints, and then here comes us, with all who in every place call on the name of Jesus Christ, our Lord, both their Lord and ours. 
Friends, that means everyone else. That means all the believers after that. So this is saying explicitly, Paul did not just write this book for this church. It means he's writing it for us as well. Now the reason the book of 1 Corinthians is so special, it's more than just the fact that he wrote it for all of us. It's about the fact that I can read this book and I, re I can relate. Because when I read Genesis, when I read about Abraham sacrificing his son, I don't get the concept of sacrifice. Sacrifice for me means only buying one instead of two. Sacrifice for me means, okay, I'll, ta I'll take the Coke Zero today. You know, something like that. It, it's, that's not sacrifice. I don't get what they were going through here. But the book of 1 Corinthians, I can relate. And the thing is, when we look at the book of 1 Corinthians, people very often look at them as the black sheep of the family. They're the horrible, they're the despised, they're full of sin. That's the book where someone was sleeping with his mother-in-law and it's just, it's horrible. These people were doing ferocious things, but they're the church of God. And it's so easy for us to judge them, but the moment I start looking at every single thing that's happening there, I realize, but that's still society today. Everything that they were facing there is things that we're still facing today. So suddenly, a book in the Bible is not only relevant to me, but it's also written to me. And this is why I'm excited, because I feel that this book has the potential to change our lives. Now, Paul does two basic things in this book. Number one, he responds to, let's call it a, re a report of the church. Let's call it a progress report. Someone came to, to Paul from the house of Chloe saying, listen, you started the, the, ch the church of uh, Corinth. Listen, I need to give you feedback. These guys have lost the plot completely. You need to speak into them. You need to write them a letter. You need to fix it. So that's what he did. But then along with that letter, he also answered some questions. And once again, I can relate with him. Because I might be messing up on this side of my life, but at the same time, I'm still seeking God. Who here can relate to that? Because I think I can. I'm missing God. I'm missing the point, but please, I've still got a couple of questions. And that's what Paul's trying to do. And he speaks about all of the things that we actually care about. But the thing is, before he does these two things, he lays a foundation, and this is why today's message has such a long introduction, because I feel we need to lay the foundation. He lays a foundation with four chapters. And with each one of these four chapters, he discusses basically two points. And these points sort of repeat. Now, last week we discussed the first chapter, and the first point being... Stop seeking affirmation or status. That's the first thing that he did. Because the first thing that these people did was they started looking for attention. Very much like my child at the back there. No, I'm just kidding. No. So, he writes to them. For it has been declared to me, remember like I just said, the report, to me concerning you, my brothers, by those who are of the house of Chloe, that there are contentions, meaning fights and, you know, fights and disagreements among you, now this is what I mean. Every one of you saying, every one of you is saying, I am of Paul, I am of Apollos, I am of Cephas, I am of Christ. Is Christ divided? Was Paul crucified for you or will we be baptized in the name of Paul? Now all he's saying here is everyone is trying to name drop and say, but listen, Paul saved me. No, but wait, I met Jesus that one time in the shop, just quickly. Everyone is trying to get just a little bit of step above the rest because Paul saved me. No, Cephas saved me. I was baptized by this person. And Paul is just saying, listen, neither I or Cephas or Apollos died for you. Christ died for you. We are all equal. Stop seeking attention. Stop seeking leadership. He carries on to remind them that we are all called in weakness. He tries to focus on them that, listen, by the way, I don't know if you know this, but you're a bunch of misfits. Let's face it, because you're in the port city. Like, no one cares about you. I mean this in the nicest possible way. People are literally using and abusing you because you're the port city. Now, how this whole story works, I wanted to put a map there, but I thought I'd make it difficult for myself. Now, imagine this whole story there. So this is land. But then there's a small little piece of land over there. So people would take their ships to there, take it across the land, and then take the next ship. Instead of going the 400 or 500 miles across, so everybody literally just stopped over. No one wanted to stay there. Everybody just sort of, you drop off your stuff and you go. It's, it's, a, it's like a fast food place. To the place where he says, For observe your calling. So in their weakness, in them being misfits, Paul tells them, by the way, observe your calling. Realize that you are called for something. Brothers among you, not many wise. That's horrible. He's telling them, not many of you are wise. By the way, he doesn't say any, he says many. 
Not many of you are wise according to the flesh. So none of you are educated. Not many mighty men among you. So you're not even strong. So you're not, you're not smart. You're not strong. And not many of you are noble. You don't even have good values. But God has chosen you, the foolish things of this world, to confound the wise. That's why God chose you. Because you're useless. Because that means He gets all the glory and you get a prize seat at the front. God has chosen the weak things of this world to confound or to confuse the things which are mighty. God did it on purpose. And by the way, if you are educated, strong, or you have good values, it says many. So there were some people there. So it's fine. It doesn't say that you need to be useless. Um, <laughs> he's saying it helps. So that's the two things for the first chapter that we sort of discussed last week. Stop seeking attention. Stop seeking leadership. Stop seeking position because that's what they did. Number two, realize that in your weakness you have strength in God. That's the foundational thing. Then he moves on to the second piece of foundation. The plain example said, he's saying, listen, when I came to you, I came to you as plain as could be. Which is why I said in the beginning, I'm just going to be me with a little bit of that. That's all. Brothers, when I came to you, I did not come with superiority of speech or wisdom. Some of you are thinking the word superiority is already a big word. Let's dumb it down. No. So he said, I did not come to you with superiority of speech or wisdom. Declaring to you the testimony of God, I determined not to know anything among you except Christ and Him crucified. I did not come to you with anything else. I didn't pretend to be the best person in the world or the smartest. I just came to you and I told you Christ died for you. I was with you in weakness and in fear and in much trembling. My speech and my preaching was not with enticing words or the wisdom of man's wisdom, but in the demonstration of the spirit of power, so that your faith should not stand in the wisdom of men, but the power of God. Because you see what happens every now and again. Now, I don't know if you've seen this, but I've, I've, I've been riled up by people who are very passionate and they're good speakers and they have a way of sort of making you feel, yes, let's go take on the world. But that only lasts this long. And this very often I've seen Christians, they get riled up, they get excited in the moment, they get emotional. Jesus, I'm going to change the world for you. And then they need to do something or let go of something. We're like, no, it was, it's okay. And then they carry on with their life. And that's what Paul desperately didn't want to do. That's why we, we think about everything that we try and do here at Village Church as well. We try and be not boring, we try and be clear. And even as I was preparing this message, sort of contemplating how plain and basic can I keep this so as not to distract from the message. I can bring in extra videos, I can bring in maps, I can bring in all sort of creative stuff that I love. But that's not what God called me for. God called me to bring you Jesus. God called me to help you seek Him when you're at home. And the only way for us to seek Him is if we stop looking for leadership, we realize that we are useless, and the, second, or and the third point is just be yourself. Don't be creative. If you are creative, then be that person, but don't be anything that you're not. And the final foundational point, so much more than we can imagine. Now he's saying, Johan, what do you mean? Well, let's ask Paul. Paul says, Yet we speak wisdom among those who are mature. Now I'm going to pause here for a few seconds with especially this slide because it needs to be just a bit more clear. He says, listen guys, we've got a useless message, a plain message. But we speak this plain useless message because you are weak. We're speaking it amongst these people. We're speaking it amongst the mature, the perfect people, the higher people, the top dogs, even though we're the underdogs. Although not the wisdom of this age, so we're speaking among them, but they're not going to get it. Nor the rulers of this age who are coming to nothing, but we speak the wisdom of God. So we speak something that they don't understand. The hidden wisdom of God which was ordained before the age of glory. None of the rulers of this age knew it. For had they known it, they would not have crucified the Lord of glory. But it is written, I hath not seen, nor heard, or nor ear heard, nor has entered into the heart of man the things which God has prepared for those who love him. But God has revealed them to us by His Spirit. None of us have a clue. But yet through the Spirit we have a sort of glimpse. 
And I think it's something that we need to learn every single day and carrying on. But God has revealed them to us by His Spirit. For His Spirit searcheth all things, yes, the deep things of God. For what man knows the things of man except the Spirit of man which is in him. So He's saying, if you can't even think or tell me what I'm thinking, how on earth are you going to tell me what God thinks? Likewise, no one knows the things of God except the Spirit of God. We keep on thinking that we know what God's thinking. We keep on thinking that we're going to tell Him what to do. We don't know the big plan. We don't know how things are going to get stuck together. Now we, now we have received not the Spirit of this world, but the Spirit which is of God, so that we might know the things that are freely given to us by God. I want to pause here, once again. I like pausing because I feel that very often we just try and get to the end and the end doesn't help us. When we're at the end, we're finished. Then you're going home or when we're in heaven. That's the whole point. That's when we're done. But for now, we need to pause. We need to realize that we need to stop seeking position. We need to realize that we're useless. We need to realize that we have absolutely no idea. Because the thing is, what we like to do as Christians, we like to think, God, you saved me, and I'm thankful for it, and in that moment I'm saved, and you feel free. I don't know who, who here has ever experienced it. And then after that, for some reason, that freeness, that, that peace, it goes away. And I kept on thinking, why does this happen? Why does this feeling go away? And I realized, because we realize we're getting more of God, but we try and be creative about the whole story. We try and be creative about the whole point. Friends, the amount of money, this is my wallet, it's a thin wallet, I like it very much, my wife hates it. <laughs> she does, really, um, because it's very difficult to get the cards out and things, but I like it. This is her wallet. I'm not allowed to say anything more. <laughs> In any case, this is her wallet, this is my wallet. The amount of money that both these wallets can handle are exactly the same. Generally both my money, but in any case, no, I'm just kidding. But in any case, both these wallets can keep the same amount. But the thing is, what we very often forget, both these wallets, the thin one and the thicker one, can also handle Bill Gates' money and Elon Musk's money and all those people combined. Because this does not hold the money. It holds the card that holds the power. And for me, that is the most simple explanation of what Paul is getting at. Because we need to realize, we might be the wallet, and some wallets are big, some wallets are small. But when we receive God's Spirit, the card, that's where the power lies. But we keep on trying to get a different wallet, and we complain about the wallet, and we look for extra teachings, and mythical teachings, and we try and add to God, and I need to cut off my uncle's sister who lived next to a mason who was a gardener. Or, or something. We, we have this and we, we want to chase out demons and spirits instead of focusing on God. And I'm not saying that these things don't exist because they do. Things exist there and it's a spiritual warfare and that's true. I get it. The amount of times that I've heard people say in difficult times we're fighting, you know, a difficult spiritual fight is not of flesh and bone. I get that. But the whole focus of the whole Bible, the whole time is focus on Jesus and the rest will take care of itself. He will lead you in all things. And the only way for us to get more of Jesus, the only way for us to get more of God is to continuously seek Him. We need to stop looking for all the extra fluff and color in our, our wallets and look for creative things. Because what we very often do is we get a gold medal or a gold car or gold something and we want to chrome it. And it's, that's what we do. We, we want to make it shiny. But we're trying to hide the value with all our creativeness. Just take it as it is. That's the whole point. Because the message is so simple, because the message is so foolish, that's why it can save. Friends, it's an amazing message and for some reason we keep on adding to it and then we lose the point. And that's why very often we feel like we're not hearing God anymore because we keep on wanting Him to say something else. And all He's saying is, I love you, it's done. But we keep on clinging to other stuff. We keep on clinging to everything else. We keep on clinging to our past and this and it's done. And for this message, we've done chapter 1 and 2, and we're going to carry on with the rest of the, the foundational phases for the next two weeks, except if there's another lockdown with tonight's speech. But 
God willing, we'll be carrying on next week and the following week to lay this foundation. But the thing is, it doesn't mean that we should stop because what I've noticed what we do is we procrastinate. Who here procrastinates? <laughs> I'm captain of the team, but I'll do it tomorrow. <laughs> you know, that type of thing. Like, I I'll do it tomorrow. It it's fine. I'll stop procrastinating. And, and the thing is, we do this. We, we do this in life. You know, I want to know more of Jesus and I, and I want to start changing the world, but I'll do it later. I need to understand the Bible better. I need to be a stronger Christian. I need to be healthy before I go to the doctor. That's what we do, and we shouldn't. And it feels like all of these things are so open, but friends, we need to realize that we have all we need. We've got the card, we've got the spirit, we've got everything that we need inside of us. Now I want to play a song for us now. You can sit, it's fine, because you're not going to know the words in any case. They will be on the screen. But I want this song just to sort of do something to us. Let God speak to us, whatever it might be, but let it make a difference in your life. Now for me, that was just a, a reminder. I generally don't like it when people play a song and say, listen to the words, because it takes forever. But there's something about that song that just sort of reminds me that we keep on waiting, we keep on thinking that later on, or when I'm perfect, or when I'm this, or someone else. Or and it's our duty, it's our privilege. It's an honor to be able to say that it's done. It is. And with that, I want to challenge all of you in a friendly challenge. This is sort of how I summed up 1 Corinthians. And by the way, let the Spirit lead you with what it says there. Sorry, our <laughs> projector is still going slowly. But just chapter 1, I just see two points. I see stop trying to impress. We are cold in our weakness. Chapter 2, unimpressive example that Paul set, an unfathom unfathomable depth of God. Now in the week to come, and the week after that, let's look at chapter 3 and 4. Just write it down. Read it and see if you can decide beforehand what the next two topics are. It's a simple, simple exercise. Literally, if you take an audio Bible and you look at three or chapter 3 or 4, it takes you about 3 or 4 minutes to read the whole chapter. That's very quick. So let's take about 10 minutes, read them more than once. Because I've realized something. Despite what you might think, I literally read chapter 2, I think it was about 15 or 20 times before I fully just understood what was happening. And it wasn't because it was difficult, it's because I was expecting something else. My expectation was something else. And then when I just sat and I read chapter 1, 2, 3, 4, and I just flowed, I realized, flip, that makes sense. Friends, I just really want to encourage all of us, let's, let's get rid of all the useless things, let's stop being creative and looking for a bigger wallet to hold more money and realize that we're all that God needs. God designed us the way that we are for a reason. Your intrinsic, your good things, your bad things, that's how He made you. Allow Him to remove the things that He doesn't want anymore and allow Him to keep the things that He should. So I want to say thank you so much for this morning. I'm going to pray for us and then I'd also like to ask you a few questions for those of you who might have something on the heart. Dear Lord Jesus, I want to say thank you this morning for all the people that are here. I want to say thank you that we can be gathered together in your name. Thank you for your love. Thank you for your guidance. Thank you for the fact that today is such a beautiful day. Thank you for the fact that we have a hope in you. So easy for us to just think that it's all about us and we deserve it. Lord, thank you for reminding us that we don't and that you're working in us because we're weak, and because we're weak, we can see your glory, Lord. Thank you for that. I ask that you please allow us to be the church on Monday as well, and Tuesday, and every day after that, Lord. Let it not stop here. Let's see God, and, and, and seek more of who you are, Lord. Allow us to seek the depth that only your Spirit can reveal to us in those moments, Lord. Help us have those aha, those beautiful, those overwhelming moments of your presence, Lord, on a constant basis. Not because we're seeking the feeling, Lord, but because we're seeking you. And we don't pray this because we deserve it, Lord, because we don't. But we pray this in your grace and in your mercy, and we thank you for that, Lord. Amen.